She said I won't be back in a while. Don't wait. Already packed her bags, called the cab, made space. And she said I won't answer if you call me when you're lonely. I guess I let her go. Never mind. It's too late. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode from Salvage Nation. This episode is a very special episode and that is due to the information that I've got on my 2015 Vauxhall Corsa E. As you can see, it's a very cold and bitter day today in London, but I've got a very nice warm story to share with you guys that hopefully will help warm us up here on Salvage Nation. So if you remember about a month, two months ago, I dropped the first episode on this build. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a card up above, kind of right there. Um, I bought this car from the auctions, completely random. I thought, it's bills like these that I have to buy to kind of flip on the side to raise money to keep the channel going at the moment because, trust me, YouTube is not paying anything close to what we need to keep the channel going. But anyway, um, I literally bought this car at the auctions. I think it was from Colpar in Bristol, I believe. Bought the car totally at random. I dropped the first episode and after that first episode I got a DM from one of my subscribers and mate if you're watching this I'm not gonna put your name out there but if you want to make yourself known feel free to comment down below this guy has been following my channel from the beginning you know always coming in always giving me support and it's so random but it's, it's, it's a nice random this car actually belonged to his mum and to make it even more special his mum has passed away due to Covid back in January and since I found that out you know, the whole family has been in touch. I've spoken to his sister. I've spoken to, to everyone's reached out and they've shown nothing but love. Um, but what are the chances? You know, like he's been subscribed to the channel from day one. We bought the car, his, his late mom's car, who, and it meant a great deal to her. And I feel privileged to be able to work on this car and bring it back to its former glory. Um, one of the things that I arranged with the family, and this was my own idea, and, you know, they were very nice, they didn't want to take any cash, I wanted to donate or I wanted to give something back. And one of the things that came out was, his mum used to work with a charity, Saving Hens, believe it or not, she was very passionate about that. And once this build is over, I'm gonna be donating some of the funds once I sell the car to this charity, just as a way of giving back. Um, I just wanna thank the family for taking your time, you know, it's a difficult moment. Um, and I'm privileged, I'm just privileged to be able to work on this car and I hope that you follow and I hope that it doesn't bring up too much for you guys. You know, we spoke and I was told that you guys wanted to, you know, the family wanted to get the car back and do it up, but it was just too painful. I've spoken to you, mate. You, we've had a few correspondence and, you know, it's landed on the channel, the channel that you've been following and I hope that it brings you some sort of closure to see the car coming back to life. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. The family was okay for me to share the story. And that's just a little bit of a backdrop. And ever since I found that out, it made me feel, there was a sense of nostalgia, there was a sense of fate. You know, the irony of getting this car and it's got this story and it's the connection with the channel and the subscribers and you know, it's, it's yeah. I'm gonna stop blabbing because yeah, it's, it's just got me. It fills me with joy, it fills me with a lot. And I'm just, I'm just happy that I can you know, hopefully give you guys a bit of closure. I'm gonna be putting my all into this. I'm not gonna roll it out like I normally do, because I normally break it up. I'm just gonna try to do as much as I can in this episode. Let's get the car in the garage. We're gonna strip it down. We're gonna check out the damage. Once we check out the damage, it's a category in, so it shouldn't have any crazy sort of chassis damage or anything. We'll replace the damaged parts and start the reassembly process all in this episode. So guys, please go down below, show the family some love, and like I said, mate, I'm not gonna call your name. If you wanna make yourself known, feel free. And I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, and I'm gonna leave it like that. So let's go get the car and get started. But the plan for today is I need to strip down all of this front bumper. I wanna remove this bonnet and have a look inside like it's even jammed. As you can see, that front slam panel is bent right there, um, but I've got a new front slam panel. Um, I'm not expecting any chassis damage because it's a category N car. This cost me about 1,800 pound at the option, but it's only got 26 on the clock and it's got two keys, full service history, one owner from new. Um, so 
like I said, go check out episode one if you want to see more of the finer details of the car. But for now, let's get this front end off the car. So guys, I've just had a thought. Once again, if you remember in the first episode, we found out that the water rod is bent, but it's not broken. So there's still lots of water in the system. It's holding its pressure. So I wonder if the AC rods are good as well. Um, obviously, I'm going to replace in the entire rad pack, but I want to do a check to see if there's any gas in the system before I go ahead plugging everything off. And if there is, I'm going to take it next door to Multicar Repairs. They've got the machine to extract the gas. They'll save it in their storage for me. And then once I refit the new um, rad, once I refit the new radiator pack, I can get that same gas and top it back up. So let me go check. And it's simply a little valve in the bottom. If I press it and I see the gas coming up, then it's got gas. If I press it and nothing comes out, then there's no gas and I can continue. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Guys, you saw that. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna edit that out. You saw, you saw that. There's definitely gas in the system. So I'm gonna stop here. We're gonna take it next door, get that gas extracted, because I don't wanna waste it. It's very, very poisonous. I'm gonna go wash my face and my mouth and wash my hands as well. But we're gonna extract that gas and then we're gonna refill it later on. Guys, AC gas is very, very harmful. It's very dangerous. It's very poisonous stuff. So, as you just saw, that just squirted in my face. I went, I went straight away. I washed all of my face, my eyes, my mouth, my nose. I blew my nose. You, you just get it off of you as soon as possible. I really should have taken better precaution. So I'm telling you guys so that you make better precautions if you're working on these cars. With that out of the way, let's go next door and extract that gas. Guys, we just got a bit of a result. There's a sticker right here, I'll put it on the screen. It says it takes 0.45 kg of refrigerant. And by using that machine, I was able to extract just over 40. So it takes 0.45 and I managed to extract 0.41. So that is the result, we can top it up, but I've got the majority of the refrigerant and now that's being stored in that machine. I'm gonna tear down the front end, then I'll put the front end back together with the new rads and the new condenser pipes and the new everything. Then I can recycle that old AC gas to top back up the AC system, saving myself about 70 quid in the process. So I thought I'll include that so you guys can see. Let's get the front end down on the car.
Alright, so guys, that took about an hour. That is a record. I literally just blitzed through the whole front end down in less than an hour. So I'm happy with that. Now that we've got the front end down, come check out the damage a bit closer. So guys, take a look. I always say this in all my videos. Once you remove, once you remove the damaged parts and you leave it bare, that's where you can get a true picture of exactly what's happening. Have a look, this is a category in car, so the chassis legs are completely straight. One and two, chassis legs are straight. The front bumper over there, um, that's gone. I've got a new bumper on the way. The red pack is completely gone as well. But can you see the curve? It's curved, but it's not broken. As we saw earlier, I got smashed in the face from this valve right here, which is full of coolant. That's the refrigerant. And if you look at the bottle right there, it's still full of coolant as well. And it's getting up to temperature. So although they've bent, they're not broken the seals or anything and they're not leaking, which is good. But if you look right there, I've got a replacement rad pack ready and waiting to fit. This is the front reinforcement bar and this has actually done its job. It's meant to take the brunt of the force, fold, bend, crack, whatever it needs to do. And that's exactly what it done. So that's the broken one over there. And after the first episode where I went through all the damage, I went ahead and I made an order for this. So I've taken it off exactly the way this one is so that it makes it a bolt-on job and hopefully we're gonna get this front end bolted back up all right guys so as you just seen I've got the majority of the mechanical parts but before I can reassemble the front slam panel and all the other bits I need to replace this red pack um, this red pack is gonna come off like you saw earlier I've already salvaged my AC gas but if you're ever working with salvage cars guys just be very careful with AC gas it can pollute the atmosphere but it can make you very very ill if it's gone in if any of it gets into your face your mouth your eyes like you saw earlier make sure you wash it out straight away I know I've said it again but I just need to stress that point right I'm gonna stop talking let's get this off the car get this one on because I'm excited to see what this car is gonna look like once everything's back together Guys, I was just being lazy using the pliers when really and truly I should have gone and got the correct tool to lock these clips in place because it's hurting my finger. So never be lazy like me, always get the right tools. Now let's continue. And to interrupt the video, we're just doing a little tester. Check this car out and tell me in the comments, would you like to see one of these on Salvage Nation? This is a facelift LCI BMW M140i Shadow Edition. Would you like to see something similar? Check it out. Guys, I am gassed. I'm, look, I'm in the middle of working. My mate has just come down. I'm gonna stop teasing. You let me know in the comments, would you like to see an M car? If you've been the OG subscriber of the channel, my, one of my dream cars is not Ferrari, it's not, it's an M car. And you know what? I, want, I really wanted the E92 M3, but I'm really starting to like these M135s and M140i's. They are, they are tiny little cars, massive straight six, turbocharged engines. There's so much mods we can do to them. If you wanna see one of them on the channel, Drop a comment down below, let me know right now. This thing is sick, listen again. Oh. Love it, love it. Anyway, I'm gonna stop. 
I'm gonna turn it all off. Let me know. And if you say, we'll do it together. Right, let's get back to the video. Guys, 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 take a look at that. A little bit of hard work. I think it's been about two hours now. We completely tore down the front end. We replaced all the broken parts. I've replaced my radiator pack. I topped up the fluids. I ran the car for about, about 45 minutes. The car, the fan kicked in. Everything is working. That front slam panel has been replaced and now everything is ready to receive that front bumper. But that's still in the post. But for now, what did come in the post is that bonnet. So the last thing I want to do for this episode is remove that bonnet, get the replacement bonnet on, test to see if it's open and closed and make sure that everything lines up and then we'll see how we're doing for time. Guys, that's it. We've managed to partially rebuild the front end on this car in record breaking time. I put on the bonnet. I know that the gaps in the lines are not 100%, but we can sort that out later on once we get into the paintwork process. So guys, there you go. We got quite a lot done in this episode. Um, I am tired, so this is where we're gonna be in in this episode. And just as a reminder, I'm gonna be donating to the same charity of the lady who has passed away who used to own this car. A reminder, she's the mom of one of my subscribers and this was her pride and joy and yeah it's just a feeling of nostalgia so I want to just do something pay my respects give something back and I'm gonna be donating if you want to do the same I'll put the information right here on the screen and I'm sure that 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 will bring some sort of closure or some sort of joy to the family um, moving on this is a car that I bought with the intentions of turning it over to make a profit in order to keep the channel going and you guys have kept asking for prices so I'm just gonna tell you how much I've spent so far so I've got it all written down here Corsa E 2015 um, one owner from new it's got 26 on the clock I paid 2400 including the fees the winning bid was 1.8 so I paid 2 for everything to my garage um, and then I went down to if you were on my Instagram if you're not following me follow me on Instagram I posted kind of like a behind the scenes I went down to uh, Breakers in Essex. I got that front slam panel and the red pack for 280 pounds. And then I've paid 220 pounds for the bonnet, front bumper, and a few brackets. Um, only the bonnet has shown up today. And my parts supplier, they're gonna bring the rest of the parts tomorrow. So we're gonna pick up um, the next episode. I think it's episode three tomorrow. But so far, we spent 24 on the car, 280 on the front panel and red pack, and 220 on the front bumper bonnet and the brackets so so far we're still under the three grand mark I've done my research these are going for around six between six and seven grand so there's still kind of a big margin to make a bit of profit and that's the name of the game so this is where we're gonna end this episode 
stay tuned for episode three. And if you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you press the like button. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and make sure that your bells are on. And on that bombshell, guys, this is where we're going to head off. So like I always say, keep it moving and I'll see you in the next one.